Today on Real Life, when heaven hits home, Miles and Catherine Weiss apply ancient wisdom for today's relationships. Plus, the sister to sisters discuss their best advice for newly married couples. All that and more today on Real Life. Hello and welcome to Real Life, this special place that we come together with other believers in the presence of God to learn about His perfect purpose for our lives and to encourage one another. I'm Tom McGuff and I'll be your host for this hour and it is my privilege to introduce my co-host, <laughs> Sydney Goldman happy, happy to be and Amy Schaefer. Hey. God bless you. Yeah. Always a delight to be able to be with God and be with our friends and just learn about his perfect plan for our lives. Well, our power in this hour comes to us from the book of Colossians and it's four, five and six, which says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Mmm, I like that, I like that, that I like that. That is challenging me right now. <laughs> May our words always right. be seasoned like with salt. Like, I love salt. I, before right. I even try something or taste it, I'm already wanting to put Thank salt you. on it. Yes. And that's how our words should be towards Praise other God. people. Praise just God. full of grace where people are actually longing to talk to you. That's because right. they know if I can just talk to that one girl, <laughs> <laughs> that one guy, I'm going to be so uplifted. I'm going to be encouraged. I'm going to grow as a person. I'm not going to be battered or right. bashed down, right. but I'm going to be lifted up, seasoned mm. with salt. Mm, that is so good. And just as you were saying that, Amy, I just really feel like I was putting my spirit is that our words are like seeds, right? When we speak something, we can plant a seed into oh, somebody. Bet. So I feel like you can you bless someone, you can encourage someone, or you can really break and tear someone down. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we just encourage you today, just think about what you speak. Think about what you say, whether it's to your spouse, to your Thank children, you even people you come across on the street. I think it is so important for us to be mindful of the words that we speak because when we're out in the world, that's how people see us. They'll know us by what we speak and how we show love. They yeah. really do. And you know, it's kind of like the chameleon principle. And I believe that we reflect the environment that we're in. And it, it grieves me when I see little children that just have such a burden on them. And it's obviously the environment yeah. that they're living in. Right. So we all need to take heart and be encouragers yeah. one to another. Well, don't we want as believers oh, people sure. to be attracted to us? Absolutely. Because we actually have Absolutely. something to say. We actually have the answer. We have the hope. We have Jesus living on the we inside. It's Christ do. in us, the hope of glory. We've got something to say and people need to be attracted to who we are and what we're saying so then they can get the meatiness mm -hmm. of of what they need in their That's life. Right. And boy, I'll tell you, the meatiness that you yeah. speak of, we have a lot of that in this yes, coming hour. Right. Yeah. A lot of that in this coming hour. You're going to be doing a, an interview. Yeah. Yes, I'm really excited. <laughs> we have Miles and Catherine Weiss that they're here, and we're going to be talking about the weightiness of marriage and the covenant, wow. and they're going to share mm. ancient wisdom from the scriptures from their new book, When Heaven Hits Praise Home. God. So stay tuned that it's going to really encourage, edify, and empower your relationship. It's one of my favorite marriage books that I've read, and I've read a lot of marriage <laughs> books, so it's going to be great. And also coming up, Hillsong. We're gonna watch a music video from them. It's gonna be incredible. It's going to uplift you. We love music and boy, is it salty. <laughs> I've told this story before, but, but I've always felt when my boys were growing up, I, I wanted them to understand the second most important decision that they would make in life was who they chose as their mate. And obviously the most important decision we make is our relationship with Almighty God. Mm -hmm. But I would carry a $2 bill by each of their pictures on either side of my wallet. And at both of their weddings, I gave their wives this $2 bill because I would pray. Every time I would see that $2 bill, I would just really? pray that those two will one day wow. become one. And That's before I ever knew who that person would be, mm -hmm. praise be to God. That's how wow. important this other relationship is that we have in life. Well, coming up right now on Sister to Sisters, since our show is focused on the wisdom for couples, let's hear what advice the sisters have for newly married couples.
Well, hello and welcome to this segment of Sister to Sister on Real Life. And you're going to be just amazed because we bring the questions of the world from a biblical perspective. So you're going to like this question too. This is a good one, especially if you're married. And here's what it is. What is the best advice you would give to a newly married couple? So this is a good one, Roxanne. Well, reflecting back in the past 38 years of marriage, uh, I have to say this, you have to go to church. All right? Okay, good. Don't make it an optional thing you do. That's good, Roxy. Uh, a, a church, a strong biblical church. And the second thing was I look back on my husband and I, we fellowshiped with other couples and other people, other widows, other people that have been through marriage, that are going through marriage, that would hold us accountable. You know, when you go to church, it's the, it's the preacher or whoever up there and you're here in the pew looking at them. But when you're sitting in a circle or semi-circle like we are, we are making one another accountable personally. That's good. That's good. You know, there's a level with the preacher gives us the word and makes mm -hmm. us accountable. But we're actually understanding and knowing each other and making each other accountable to the marriage. Because the scripture says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ, Christ cleanses us. So what's walking in the light? Being real, not being a superficial Christian. When you talk in a circle or something, we're real with one another. We're discussing our real issues, our real problems. Light uh, brings to light reality. Well, that, then that brings me to this question. Should only happily married people give advice to newlyweds? What if you're not happy? What if you're divorced? I haven't met anybody that's happily married. I've met people who are very committed. And, and, and look at the looks that I'm getting. Wow. Because when you say happy, we have questions, and, and, and I'm thinking of some of our own answers, ladies, around yeah. this table when we talk about happy and joy yeah. and what the difference is. Yeah. Yes. So am I happily married or, you know, am I joyfully submitted to the will of God for my <laughs> life with this partner for the rest of my life? There is a difference. That's and good. so... Um, uh, when I look at that um, and when I think of my own personal life, which I, I've shared several times, you know, we, you know, we've been through counseling for probably everything, you know, uh, that you could possibly go through counseling for. When I look at people, I remember this one couple, I will not say their name on TV, but they, they were in ministry and they, we've never had a crossword. And I'm thinking, I can't call a woman a liar because I don't know, I don't live with her. But <laughs> I'm thinking, how do you live wow. that close with someone? Mm -hmm. And we sit here and we do all this talking about our friends and the people that we counsel and, and you, you, you're going to have some conflict. There's something in mm -hmm. marriage that it's designed to shape you. It's going to kill the self in you. Mm -hmm. You're going to die daily several times a day. So I, I, mean, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't so, get so, it. So <coughs> my question, the question is, what do, what's the best advice? But I'm, I'm thinking, if you're, I'm, I'm always thinking about you who's watching. If you're not happily married and well, your daughter's getting married, or, what do you do? Lots of people have advice, wh whether they're right. happily married or not, or whether they're divorced or not. I mean, you ha you've gone through trials. You can still give advice. That's what I want to hear. But right. you need to be careful of who you're getting advice from. That's like, what I want to hear, you, too. I mean, uh, there's lots of people out there giving not-so-great advice. But here's my advice. Okay. Let's get on to my advice. <laughs> Let's, hear Let's hear it. Here's my advice. Pray together daily. Start, yes. it, start yes. it from the beginning and pray together daily. And the second piece of advice is also a spiritual piece of of advice and that is do not use sex either as a punishment or a re reward yeah. don't use it as either and don't withhold use you use it wisely don't use it as a punishment or a reward there you go that's good that's that, good. I'm gonna stop good. there I'm All not right. gonna keep okay, going that's good. what do you I have say, because you that counsel, was good. You okay counsel yes people. to a couple getting married I would say be quick to repent quick to forgive 
quick to walk in love and be one another's biggest cheerleader because there's so many situations and life happens and things are trying to pull you down at the office or out in the world. And when you come home, may they be invigorated to see you excited, uh, you know, don't always be a drain and a drag. There's got to be something attractive, you know, 22, three years down the road, you know, you want them to want to come home. You want them to long to come home, to compel them to come home. And that comes by how you're talking to them, how you're honoring them. Are you cheering them on? Do you, do you deeply love, do you, can you shut your mouth when you're That's supposed right. to? And I'm still working on it. That's you know what right. I'm saying? We're all working, yeah. we're all working. But I really believe, well, I've been married 45 years, wow. which is a real, wow. I married the yeah. black sure leather. Like 45 years yeah, old? Yeah, I am, really. Okay. I married the black leather jacket motorcycle boy when I was just a cheerleader. <laughs> he was so bad. And and he's still really bad. He's so bad to the bone that he is so good. <laughs> and I have to say one thing, just what Flo said, it's not always happy, happy, okay. but it's respect. I respect him, Amen. I get respect from him. Amen. And we both love Jesus, the key. See you yes. next time. I really love that question about mm. newlyweds. I think that is such a important things with sure. the wisdom to pour into because you know I've come out of the newlywed. I guess I'm two years out, <laughs> and I think for me, like the biggest thing that I like really loved what you said, Amy, about mm -hmm. forgiveness and love and just praying. I think it's really important as like a newlywed. Like I don't think people talk about this. Like I realized when we became one, and the day after, we f I felt like the weightiness and a shift, and I saw the attack. And even my friends that are get married, they're like, oh my gosh, it's a whole different thing. Like I had a very different understanding about, you know, even with Adam and Eve at the garden, I was like, I know why the snake is coming after them, <laughs> you know, the devil. But I would just encourage you, like, if you're a newly, you know, newly what is, you know, pray every day together. Like, mm -hmm. like my That's mentor, right. Reverend Dion, I'll never forget, she said, Sydney, marriage is two people who love God and love each other. So you got to love God, keep God at the center of your relationship, love one another, pray, and just come together daily and through those things. So That's that would be wisdom. my wisdom and advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we heard what you had to say, Amy, right. and it was, it was wonderful wisdom. And, and, and probably I would combine the two if I would say uh, one little axiom was proverbial wisdom, never let the sun go down mm -hmm. on your anger. If, there, if right. there's any sort of uh, confusion or question or, or any sort of an mm -hmm. issue, don't let the sun go down on that. And you deal with that. And, and mm -hmm. you, you have to, we're going to be learning a little bit here about Fighting fair, right. <laughs> fighting fair. It's a chapter one of the uh, in in this new book that we're going to be talking about. But I think for me, the the main part of it is to and just exactly what your mom had said that you want to uh, love God and you want to love each other, and you got to understand that it's the second most important relationship that you have in life. In life. And so you got to make it the priority. Mm -hmm. You can't allow other things. You can't allow circumstances. You can't allow work. You can't allow anything to be a diversion from making that the second highest priority in your life. It's so important that I really think it can make or break you in life. Oh, sure. It can set you mm -hmm. years ahead or years oh, it behind. Really can. And so for those of you who are praying and believing God for a, a husband or a wife, Life, we hook up our faith with yours mm, that man you you yeah. get God's best it's not easy it's not perfect it's not always sexy all the time <laughs> but you know what with God's grace and anointing That's and right. help you can have a really good rich relationship and a healthy marriage Praise listen God. we're gonna be praying at the end of the program sure for all of you so if you're struggling anywhere in marriage at all, give us a call at 888-665-4483. Or if you want us to really, really pray for you about that spouse, I believe, do you believe yeah. that, that that person can come right to your door and God so, can work it yeah. out. And you don't have to work it out in your own ability but you can let God work it out for you. Mm. I have to read you a little quote from this upcoming <laughs> guest that we have. You're going to love our very special guest uh, when heaven hits home. Man, do we need heaven to hit our sure home from Miles and Catherine. But listen to this quote, you're gonna love this. Okay, did you know that married people are healthier and happier, they have better sex and they live longer? Well, if you are married, according to contemporary studies, you are less likely to to get pneumonia, have surgery, develop cancer, or have a heart attack. Don't you want to get married and read this book? <laughs> Ancient Wisdom for Today's Couples with Miles and Katherine Weiss. Stay tuned to Cornerstone Network. We'll be right back. 
just one more. Just one more. Just one more. Jesus has a heart for the one. His love compels him to keep searching until his beloved is back in his arms. All of heaven rejoices when the lost get found. Our prayer is for the one who is lost. God has raised up Cornerstone Television with power to reach the unreachable. Hard Questions Pastor William Glaze will deliver a life-changing message, so invite your friends and family. We're going after the one. We want to pray for your loved ones who are not yet saved, empower you to share your faith with others, and team up with you to make an even bigger impact. We're expecting God to move in mighty ways during this broadcast, so mark your calendar and join Cornerstone Television for just one more. Friendship is what we're all about here at Cornerstone, and we want to find out who you are. Our new Friends Club is a place to get to know us better so we can learn about who's watching us. If you've never reached out to us before, we have a book gift to welcome you to Cornerstone. You'll also receive our monthly newsletter. Just call us and tell the prayer partner you'd like to join the new Friends Club. They'll also pray and intercede for you and your family. Call us at 888-665-4483. Connect with us today. We are so very grateful for your prayers and your financial support that have made this ministry strong for 40 years. And we now move into this next generation, this opportunity that God is giving us. And we just want to say thanks and acknowledge you as a friend of this ministry. If you've just started watching Cornerstone Television or maybe you've been a long time viewer, but you just want to say hello and just count yourself as one of the friends of Cornerstone, please call one of our prayer partners and we have a free gift for you. We'd like to say, struggling well, balancing the love and grace of God with the pain and questions of life. This new book by Dr. Fred Antonelli will be yours just as our way of saying thank you for being a friend. And now we go to Amy with new friends. Miles and Catherine Weiss have been in ministry for over 30 years. Their unique call has led them to minister around the world to the home and family and to Israel and the Jewish people. Their new book, When Heaven Hits Home, provides ancient wisdom for today's couples. I am delighted to have Miles and Catherine here on Real Life. Oh, it's our privilege to be with you today. I'm oh, glad to be here. I'm so excited. I cannot <laughs> wait to dig in because I've, I've said this on air already, but I've read many, many marriage books. And I, I loved the deep, ancient truths for like modern life that this book provides and your stories. And I actually was laughing at your humor in the book. <laughs> Tell us your story. When did it begin? How were you born again? And just so, so I, we are completely so different <laughs> that part of the meat, purpose of the book is for people to realize that God can do anything with two different people. Example, Woodstock generation, wow. Nordstrom generation. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Uh, New York Jew, California Catholic, yeah. and uh, I was awesome. reading a 12th grade level it's in second grade. My wife has, is brilliant, uh -huh. and, but has dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we've, been, uh, we've been called by God to, to have a ministry of reconciliation, right. first with each other, then with our kids, then with families, now with the Jewish people and the Arab people and around the world. And so we kind of feel like uh, we're, we are convinced that God can do anything, can do anything in your marriage, by the way. Right, right, yeah. right. And you start off the book by telling your background mm -hmm. of, you know, going to Hebrew school and what all that looked like. Right. So I grew up in a conservative Jewish home, kosher family. Uh, my grandparents were very religious. My parents a little less so. And the, my generation kind of took right. a hard left. And when... Uh, I was in Hebrew school three days a week, learned to read the sacred text, mm -hmm. was bar mitzvah, kosher home, as I said, <laughs> and, uh, but something was missing. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, after my bar mitzvah, 
I went into a kind of a period of darkness and my friends, if you're old enough to remember the Beatles, my friends called me, <laughs> called my magical misery tour, which lasted for 20 years until I met someone wow. who was born, recently born again. And our first cup of coffee, right. she challenged me about Jesus. Right. Well, so Jesus had become really real to me. I was raised in a Catholic home and you know, you hear about him, but, he, but when somebody gave me the first plain gospel truth, right? You're here, God's here. He sent his son so you could have eternal life. Do you know you're a sinner? I said, I know I'm a sinner because thank God for the Ten Commandments, right? right? They right. tell you what, what you're yeah. not supposed to do. And right. I realized I needed God to forgive me mm -hmm. and I needed God to be that bridge to have eternal life. So I received the Lord, got radically born again, and um, knew my, and then I, I was already saved. So on our first date, I was the first one saved in my family. So oh, they kind of were like, well, what's going on with mm -hmm. you? But the Lord was so gracious. He just got me in his word right away and began to grow. And then on our first date, I challenged Miles. I said, you know, Jesus has become really real to me. And if you want anything to do with me, you got to get to know this man. Wow. And the man, Christ Jesus, the one who set me free and gave me life eternal. And so I challenged Miles to look in his own book and I, I mean the Holy Spirit just gave me all of these bold statements like yeah. if you ask he will reveal himself to you and so you did and God did yeah God was very gracious to me I have uh, footprints in the sand <laughs> resisting to Jesus right uh, but realized that this whole story is related to the Jewish people yeah. and that there was not a, 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 was... a split between the Older and the Newer Testament, but it's one long love story. Wow. And it's God's grace that's preserved my people. And now here we are, it's towards the end of the age, more, people are, more of my people are coming to the Lord mm -hmm. than any time since the book of Acts. Wow. And when we see that, we realize that this is something that uh, became a life calling, but right. it was not without incredible supernatural intervention. Right. God really had to get my attention because I was a stiff-necked, difficult case. Well, Miles had, he came back at me. He said, you know, I can't, I can't receive Jesus. I'm Jewish. Right. Mm -hmm. And being raised Catholic, you know, you're not really aware of what the, the, what you, the Jewish people have to overcome mm -hmm. to say yes to Jesus. They have to overcome the pogroms and the persecution and mm -hmm. just the, the things that have been done in the name of Christ that aren't necessarily his character. Right. So I remember getting down on my knees yeah. and praying and saying, Jesus, can you save a Jewish person? And the Holy Spirit said to me, not only can I save, but I came as a Jew. I am a Jew. Yeah. So he, at that, yes. at that very beginning, gave me a burden for the Jewish people and a revelation that he, he was Jewish. And, and so as a little Catholic girl, he was giving me downloads. Mm -hmm. So a match made in heaven. Yeah, that is so beautiful. Like even on your journey, I'm just curious, you know, how did God, you know, you're, you're on this journey with Jesus and you're learning, experience the Holy Spirit. In your marriage, how did you just see like you grow even more into the fullness of all God has called you Absolutely. to be? Absolutely. The most important part for us was the Word of God. We went yeah. to Bible college right. and just dove into the Word right mm -hmm. after we got saved. And so we spent two years, two and a half years in the Word. And then I went on to graduate school to become a therapist, a family therapist. And uh, it was the word that kept us. We right. were in a spirit-filled congregation. And right. We were praying in the morning, praying in the evening. And we learned that we needed the presence of the Lord uh -huh. to overcome the differences between right. us and to find a solution for conflict. Uh, we're never angry, but I do say we do have some spirited fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think also a, a purpose greater than yourselves to yeah. give yourselves to something outside of yourselves mm -hmm. because it draws you out of yourself. Uh, we were given to missions. You know, our church was full on missions. And so that gave us something to, to, to pray about outside of ourselves and really to have your own personal prayer life and t for me to know that he's not going to make me happy mm -hmm. and that you Amen. know that I have to go That's and right. pursue God yes. and pursue other things that God's called me to I mean yes. not separate from miles not disconnected yes. but that he, he I can't expect miles to make me full mm -hmm. I have to go get Jesus to fill me up. It's a mystery because on the other hand, there's a healing that happens right. in each other's souls as God kind of knocks off the rough edges right. and, mm -hmm. and it teaches you how to communicate better. But we don't depend on each other for complete fulfillment. Mm -hmm. yes. We know we have to get it vertically first. And I need guy friends, she needs girlfriends, right. we need couple friends, we need community. In mm -hmm. my counseling practice, I tell people, because they, they think the magic hour, they're with me for one hour, this 168 hours in the week, I say, hey, we can do something and I can give you homework to carry on. However, the life is in the blood and the right. blood flows through the body. You gotta get yes. connected. Mm -hmm. yes. You need to be in, in community. Yeah. Right. That is huge. 
talk about fighting and or heated or spirited. Uh -huh. <laughs> fighting fair. Fighting fair, <laughs> like how does that happen? But before that, okay, to couples that are, one of them is saved and the other mm. one is not. Because I'm thinking it all looks great if we're all believers right. working this out. Yeah. But what about the one that mm. they're married to an unbeliever? It, that is one of the most difficult issues that we deal with mm. because it's the classic, the unequally yoked marriage temporarily. However, the one that is the believer has the power and the ability in the Lord to bridge the gap and to go places. And I'm not saying that go into sin, go into darkness, but to, to, to give themselves to winning the one who is without with the word. With speech and with their conduct yes. and with prayer mm -hmm. and that the, the unbeliever is sanctified by the believer. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it's just reaching for the best in that person yeah. and, and praying for that person and believing God to change them, that you can't change them yeah. or you're or nagging certainly can't. But. Oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of get in that. nagging would work. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I just have a question, because I know a lot of times we hear about what equally yoked means. What yes. does, like, can you break that down for us? What does that mean from like a spiritual perspective? Because I hear, you know, oh, be equally yoked, but what does that really, really look like to, when you're walking together? To me, the bottom line in that is that you're both given to the Lord. You're given to having Him determine your pathway and how you treat each other. And you're allowing His Spirit to, to be present in your life in a way that uh, doesn't allow you to uh, veer off into other right. other ways of being. For me, it's simply about both of you being believers. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the equal yoking is not going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Unity is not conformity. Unity is right. unity with Him, and then the mm -hmm. overflow is with each other. It's not conformity. We're not never going to be exactly the same. First problem: I'm a man and she's a woman. I mean, that's a right. big problem. That's right a big, there. <laughs> big difference. Big difference. And I think also like. You know, there, you go through seasons when one of you is stronger than the other, mm -hmm. and we've always made a point of believing the best for each other. Like mm -hmm. that was like one of the little things that we we decided to just like create a real atmosphere of like speaking life over each other. It's it's a Jewish tradition to lashon, you know, you could say that lashon hatov. So it's you know? a Sabbath tradition okay. from Friday night, uh, 18 minutes before the Friday, the sun goes down. Uh -huh. 18 is the number for life in Hebrew thinking. Yes until the three, first three stars come out on Saturday night. Can you imagine? And my people it's are really celebrating hard. when the first three stars <laughs> outcome, you know, yeah. implication obviously yeah. is the Trinity. And so we, 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 from that, for that period of time, and you don't have to keep Friday, Shabbat, Sabbath, you can keep that any day you like, but the, uh, the, you, you practice Lashon HaTov, which is right speech and yeah. not a negative word is to come out of you for that 24 hour period. Mm, it's it's a great discipline because you have to continually repent for things that are not exactly <laughs> yeah, positive. Like, can, we, can we edit that? And yeah. I, I like the word edit because it's like, you know, you're not gonna be perfect. And we're just, but we, it's a bar that we reach for, yeah. you know, and then when we both flub or when we both mess up, we can say, oh, I'm sorry, oops. Yeah. And then said it again. Because so death and life are in the power of the yeah, tongue. Yeah. And one of the things that's in the book also is the, the power of our speech. Think about yes. the spoken blessings throughout the Older yes. Testament. Mm -hmm. The power of how God set in motion things in people's lives generationally. Mm -hmm. The blessing to Abraham, right. the promises to Abraham of a son and a land. Yeah. You know, and, and what, how's that unfolding in life? Well, power blessing, verbal blessing is very important. Mm -hmm. Well, even as our scripture we opened with, it, we, yes. our words would be full of grace and seasoned with salt. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Will you, will you show us how to do that to each other? Like, what would yeah. you say to each yeah. other to really uplift and encourage yeah. and speak words of life? As a, as a married couple, Sydney and I want to learn. Okay, yes. so, so okay. Teach us. I'll set this up. We'll paraphrase, but I'll okay. set it up by saying that uh, one of the traditions is uh, every Friday night or whenever you ca gather as a family, the husband will pray Proverbs 31 verses 10 and following oh, over my wife. So I will yeah. tell her she is, her worth is far above rubies. And then oh. she'll pray Psalm 1 oh. over me and tell me that uh, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm. will be like a tree of life. Yes. And so we verbally use the scriptures exactly right. Scripture. to encourage wow. one another. And then we bless the children. Mm -hmm. And the picture of that is gathering around the table which is all about communion. And the whole Sabbath tradition is right. really about meeting with God and meeting with each other. Right. And it's really pictured perfectly in the wedding chuppah of the Jewish wedding, mm -hmm. where we get married under a talit, a yeah. prayer shawl, and there's, it's on four poles, and the sides are open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because the prayer shawl represents the glory of God over the couple. And if the love that they receive from the Lord is shared with each other, there's enough to go out and touch the world around them. So like, when, for example, I, I would love thank that. Miles for like, okay, so he went down and got me coffee today, you know, and so thank you, honey, that is so sweet of you. And, you know, just acknowledging the little things and um, I really love it that you get up and read the word, you know, yeah. you're just modeling for me just to be hungry for God. So just speaking, you know, give expression to the impressions. That's the one. Yeah. Give Catherine says that all the time. Expression to, to the, the impressions. impressions. If you have a good sense from the Lord, a word in season, uh, yeah. anything positive, don't be cheap. Go ahead and give it. Right. Generous. Give it, share it. Yeah. Wow. Don't you want a marriage just like <laughs> theirs? <laughs> Buckle your seat belts. We're coming back with more from Miles and Catherine in a few minutes, but right now we're gonna go to the good news. A young homeless man addicted to drugs was baptized at the same church he vandalized. Bretton Wynn destroyed $100,000 worth of property when he broke into Central Baptist Church in Conway, Arkansas back in February. The 23-year-old was homeless and high at the time when he did the crime. He faced multiple charges, but instead of doing time behind bars, the church's pastor extended grace and wanted to help Wynn. Wynn voluntarily entered a Christian rehab program and accepted Jesus into his life during one of the center's Bible studies. After he received some salvation, he decided to get baptized at the church. Wynn says he's starting to understand how God works and realizes that he didn't pick the church that night, but God picked him. How awesome is that? Well, that's all for the good news. Have a great day on purpose. You know what I loved about that story so much is that, you know, there's nothing too dirty that we will do that God won't just say, like, I'm going to bring you back in. So that young man struggling with addiction, you know, he's homeless. He vandalizes the churches, you know, destroys <laughs> thousands of dollars Praise worth of property. God. He gets himself into a rehab and he restores himself. And then he gives himself to Jesus in this rehab center and then baptizes himself in the same church. Oh, I love think, it. That think is of Saul. Yeah. Think of Saul that. on his way to Damascus get, yeah. to get permission to, to persecute more Christians. And, you know, he had his little little uh, uh, encounter with God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. One of my favorite scriptures is the righteous may fall seven times, but you get back up again. Mm. Yeah. You're not knocked down. It's That's not right. over. You're not too far gone. You didn't vandalize so deep no. and so dark. Yeah. You didn't go into addiction so deep and so heavy that you cannot get out of. And God will help raise you up out of the pit. That's what he does. Praise it's God. the very reason why Jesus came, not for perfect people, yeah. but for imperfect people, Tom. That's right. That's exactly right. I, I think of the, the passage that we have this treasure in earth and vessels, yeah. that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. And it says... We're troubled on every side. Amen. We are. Mm -hmm. we, we have, we're, we're persecuted. We're confused. Mm. You know, we have chaos in our life. It says yes to all of those things because yeah. we do, but we're never, ever destroyed. The believer, yes. because of the power and anointing of Almighty God, yeah. gets up. And I just want to make that invitation to you as you're watching this hour. You might be new to Cornerstone Television. You may be watching this program for the very first time. I believe God is speaking to you. And, and as you were hearing the, the testimony of our, of our guest just a moment ago, it's just a, a, a victory that we have in Jesus Christ. We're not sinless, we're not perfect, but this one thing we do, like the Apostle Paul, we forget what's behind and we reach forward to what lies ahead. Would you like to forget your past? Would you like to forget those mistakes that you've made in life? God says you can, and He is the creator of all. I want you to, to join us, and we're just going to have a prayer. Yes. And I just want you to join us. And, and if God is speaking to you, I want you to respond to this call that God has on your life. Father God, we just say thank you for this precious day that you've given to us. And pray, Lord, that you will be able to bless us to take full advantage of every opportunity you bring our way. Lord, we pray now with this viewer that is watching. And God, you're speaking to that person, and you're saying that... that your sins, like everyone else's sins, are many. But Lord, you sent your son into this world to die, to pay a price that we could never pay, to redeem something that was beyond redemption in and of ourselves. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear God. And Father, I just pray for this viewer that's watching now and, 
and just not knowing if they can make it another day. Father, may you be the point of encouragement. May you be the excellency of the power in their lives. Mm. And while eyes are closed and heads are bowed and you're watching this at home, if God is calling you to this, I want you to just raise your hand just as a, a, an, an act of submission, just to say, yes, Father. I want to live with the victory that, that you promise to me, even me. Thank you, dear God. Praise you, Father, for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear God, that we have this platform of television to be able to share this wondrous news. Thank you, Lord. And all of God's people say amen, amen and amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to call our, our prayer line, 888-665-4483. And I want you to tell that person on the other end, you know what, I'm different than I was just a moment ago because I believe what that man said, that God sent his son into this world to pay a price for my sin. Praise you. Well, we'll be right back with more from Miles and Catherine Weiss. Stay tuned to Real Life. We promise to bring you the hope of the gospel. Spreading the gospel has always been a foundation of Cornerstone, and we promise to always share the good news over the airwaves. We promise to touch the lost and hurting hearts. That's the heartbeat of our ministry. Jesus is the only one who brings comfort and healing, and we're continuing with the mission that God gave to Norma Bixler that says, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. We promise to teach God's Word. And when the Holy Spirit is touching your heart, we want to be there with God's Word. God's Word is the foundation that we build our lives, our family, and this ministry on. We promise to broadcast quality Christian programs. Our goal is to inspire you and help you grow in your faith. Through our programs, we will continue to entertain, evangelize, and edify. We promise to lift up the name of Jesus in everything we do, we want to bring glory and honor to our Savior. We promise to raise high His signal to the nations. Our mission is to broadcast the gospel to every generation and to pray for household salvation for every member of your family. We're so happy you're joining us because we are back for more Marriage Wisdom with Miles and Catherine Weiss. And you know, you both are just full of so much wisdom and yes. just dropping these glory oh. gems about relationships. And a point that you made that was so powerful talking about the wedding ceremony and how there's a wedding canopy. I actually had one at my, my wedding and the hoop of the significance of the glory and the weight that comes with coming in as one under the union of Christ. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. The, the, it's a picture from the wilderness of the cloud by day and the right. fire by night the presence of God. We learned early on that we didn't have within ourselves the answers that we needed. So when we were in Bible college, they talked about having a conference table. When you have a conflict, go to the conference table. But our apartment was so small, there was no room for a conference table. So, so we had two little chairs and yeah. we'd hit the wall and we'd go there until we got wisdom right. from on high. We received wisdom. We'd ask God, you've got to help us because we cannot find this in ourselves. It, That's why when heaven hits home mm -hmm, is right. the title because we need that touch. One of the chapters, I don't know if I can say this on your program, but I will. Yeah. One of the chapters is let heaven knock the hell out of your marriage. Yeah. Absolutely. Because otherwise yes. we have this, uh, this churning, mm -hmm. but yeah. God can bring peace between us. Right, and there's a classic, uh, it, the pyramid, you know, that as you draw near to God, mm -hmm. both of our lives, both of us draw near to God, uh, we're drawing near to each other. So yeah. that's that canopy that God wants to remind us that he's our covering and that we can turn to him at any moment and ask him for that help. Yeah. One thing as I'm reading your book, I, f I felt that that same like weightiness of marriage, that it's actually a covenant right. that we're right. making with one another before God. Let, I mean, let's put a, let's talk about that for a little minute right. because right now it's like, oh, I have irreconcilable differences. Right. Uh, yeah, there are big differences. Well, we're living in a disposable society yeah. where things are just, if it's not, if the belt's not, if it's frayed, we throw it away, we buy another one. Yeah. Where in, in, in ancient times, you would repair it. You would take it to the, the Smith or, and they would repair it. So we're living in a society that thinks if things are broken, we just throw it away. 
But that's not the way God, God is always a restorer. He's always a repairer. And that's what we believe that marriage can be. Any, no matter where you're at in your marriage, God can bring you a fresh forgiveness, fresh healing, and a fresh faith for each other. Yeah. It's a covenant, it's the difference between contract and covenant. Mm -hmm. Contract is kind of the marriage of today, and like you say, reconcile the differences. We just go and mm -hmm. split right. up and start over. And and we are not judgmental about people who've no. been divorced right. or anything like mm -hmm. that. God wants to restore and mm -hmm. renew and give new life to all of us. So it's not coming. We're not coming from that place at right. all. And we work with friends. We have friends. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just not the issue. But the idea of covenant is it's it's a blood covenant. Yes. And it goes back to the blood covenants of old, mm -hmm. and it's a really it's unto death. It's a it's a covenant oh. unto death, and only only death will part us. That's why uh, I say I'm kind of Isaiah 53. I, I realized, oh my gosh, the sacrifice that Yeshua Jesus made was for me, and it's a Jewish story. And Catherine's kind right. of Ruth 116, where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will yes, lodge. Right. Your people shall be my people, yes. and your God my God. Mm -hmm. That's unto death, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's a, it, like you say, it's weighty. It has chavod or, or glory or weight mm -hmm. in it. That um, that's why we think, feel like the most important thing in marriage is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I love that what Tom said about mm -hmm. not letting the sun go down on your anger right. earlier in the show, mm -hmm. because that is actual, actually a byword for us. We, we're we're going to not let this end badly. We're going right. to clean it up, finish it, repent quickly, forgive quickly. And, you know, covenant is, is, is a bond. It's a, it's a lifelong commitment. We, we say the vows in our marriage, you know, for better, for worse, for richer, or poor, until death do us part. But it's also, I think you have to explain also the Hebrew word for help mate. It's, it's been, okay. yeah. it's mm -hmm. been. Uh, so this, yeah. So it's important. If you see the, in the King, okay, so the old English, uh, Genesis 3.28 says that he will be, God will make a helper, right, a, yeah. a connector. Mm -hmm. So in, in the Old English, it says help meet, help suited. Right. Mm -hmm. In King James, it says help mate, a little closer. Mm -hmm. But the Hebrew is etzer konegdo. Mm -hmm. And what that means is co-equal in power, and she's a lifesaver. You d break hey, down the Hebrew yeah, language, isn't that cool, girls? and so so <laughs> this is really important. It's very important because because uh, and the research backs this up. By the way, you yeah. know the book. Right. By the way, this book, when heaven hits home. Net is where you can get our book, and in it you have not only the biblical basis for how to have a successful marriage, but also right. the research that's out there that's valid. I, we, I've been a psychotherapist for 30 years, mm -hmm. and so the re, there's research that validates or affirms what the Bible already teaches us. Wow. And one of the things that we learn from the research is that men, sorry guys, men who accept influence from their wives have successful lives. Wow. And so... Uh, I said Amazing. that. <laughs> I said Thank that to say, you ladies. For saying that. But don't, don't. You can't abuse that. Catherine right. mentioned nagging. You yes. can't abuse it by nagging because right. you'll because men strategic. thrive on respect. Mm -hmm. In general, we thrive on respect and sex. Yes. And women thrive on love and security. Yeah. So a man's job is to figure out what makes this woman feel loved and provide that for a lifetime, and what makes her feel secure. secure. Yeah. And the respect factor is to to be to be uh, cautious, careful and yes. well-spoken when you mm -hmm. correct or bring something to your husband, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Which Catherine is a master at doing. Well, mm -hmm. We call it a hero sandwich. She'll tell me how awesome I am, <laughs> then she'll slip in the criticism, <laughs> and then she'll tell me again how awesome I am. It's a hero Trick. sandwich. We are learning a lot here. I mean, you guys honestly seem like you never fight. Oh. Like, everything's good all the time. And meanwhile, back here in the Berg, no, we're not, trying no. to... But you know what? I, I, want, I want to say to the viewers that we do have an enemy, yeah. and the enemy wants to destroy our marriage. And when our flesh is yielded to the enemy, or, you know, we all have those bad days, we all have those cranky moments or hormonal moments, and we just have to recognize, wow, that was my hormones, or that's the enemy, and we're going to shut that door. We're not going to yes. let that in, or... You know, and then plead the blood. You know, mm -hmm. I really believe the power of the blood yes. is is the covenant Amen. that yeah. God has with us and we have with each other, and cleanses that. And so we can be, you know, we can move move along quickly. We, we want to get back to the, uh, and this may sound, we want to get back to the felt sense of the presence of the Lord with yes. each other. Right. So whenever the things go sideways, I have a funny story about this because we were raised in this congregation that was praying for missions all the time, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. I mean, real full tilt, you know. Full revival contact. Times, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. in the revival times, and so uh, my sons were raised in that atmosphere, uh -huh. and they 
got used to the presence of the Lord. One day we were having spirited fellowship in the front of the car, and my older son was in the car seat, and all of a sudden he pipes up from the back seat. And he says, where's Jesus? <coughs> right. It's like, and we had a very oh. dramatic moment wow. of, oh my gosh, we can, by our words and by allowing adrenaline and hormones or whatever right. to get have its way, we can actually block out the felt sense of the presence of the Lord, and a baby could tell. Yeah. So we are so cautious to repair. Jesus. Where's Jesus? <laughs> heaven in this home? Because <laughs> like this is hearing that's like when you were just talking wow. about Ezra Connect, though, that really like hit my spirit and just about what it really looks like to be man and wife and to walk hand in together. hand together. Exactly. That is just so powerful. But it's yeah. like, you know, marriage is a ministry of reconciliation. You know, yes. our, our marriage is modeled after Jesus Christ, who is all about forgiveness. Yes. So we have to learn how to walk in that forgiveness daily. And, and yeah. he elevated women like no one else. And we're in the time where God is elevating women in our voice. Miles has been really always gracious about that and giving me a place. And I think I think it, it, he's a good Jewish husband in that way mm -hmm. that he realized that it was it was wise for him to listen to me. And I've always tried to honor you oh, in, in any way. So. I think what you said is really important. I believe as we're as the bride mm -hmm. is preparing for the bridegroom from heaven. Yeah that the closer we get to that time, that women are being going to put more on display in ministry with a voice and that they have a, a comparable life-saving mm -hmm. partnership that God's going to put more and more on display as we see the Lord approaching. What I'm hearing for you from you guys is that you can actually have heaven in your home. Yes. And yes. instead of saying, where's Jesus? You <laughs> say, he's right here, yes. right in the middle of this marriage covenant that we made before God. Thank you very, very much for yeah. all of the wisdom. I mean, I feel like I'm, I need to change some things right now. And Buck, just so you know, I'm your lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> Man, in just a moment, we are praying for all of your prayer requests. If you're struggling at all in your marriage, if maybe one of your spouses is not saved or you're believing God for a spouse, we're going to pray at the end of this program. So call in now, 1-888-665-4483. But here is a real-life music spotlight with Hillsong Worship, who you say I am.
Tomorrow on Real Life, serving persecuted Christians worldwide. David Curry, president of Open Doors, explains how they aid the persecuted church. Also, how can you fight evil? The hard questions pastors prepare for spiritual warfare. Plus, Cornerstone Cares partner Bill Richardson shows how Cornerstone is caring for the Nepalese people. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Welcome back. It is always just a delight to come to this last portion of the program where we just kind of uh, talk about our takeaways. We talk about uh, our prayer requests and, and, and we literally, this is maybe the most intimate part of the whole program. Right. And speaking of that, I think you have something that I you'd know. like to share. Well, you know, we like to celebrate here and today <laughs> is Catherine's do. birthday. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we just want to sing to you. Would you mind? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Ready? So sweet. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Catherine. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> well, this has been literally a celebration, this whole program, the, the wisdom that you shared. And, and I, I just have to say, Miles, something that, that struck me was, um, well, every piece of biblical wisdom that you gave was, was powerful. But uh, when you talked about at Shabbat, how very intentionally you don't say an unkind word. And I, I just think of the, the verse that God blessed us with from Colossians that says to be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace and, and seasoned 
with salt. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, exactly. You know, he, God gifted us with language. Mm. We're the ones right. who got the gift of language. So on the one hand, we recognize from Proverbs that, the, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. We can either build each other up or tear each other right. down. That's so we right. want to be very intentional daily. As believers, we don't have to wait for Friday or Sunday. Right. That's right. We right. can every, t every day be intentional about building mm -hmm. each other up. Praise also, God. Hebrews tells us that the, the worlds were framed by the Word of God. What mm -hmm. power That's right. is in the Word and in the words that we speak to one another. So it really is a, a way of building your house or tearing your house down. Right. So we Praise choose God. to build. We choose consciously. Right. And, it, yeah, and Catherine, I'd just like to give you an opportunity to speak literally to someone that was watching this program mm. today about the importance of perseverance mm. and keeping our eyes on God, on how, God. how that prayer yes. is so critical. Yeah, you know, it's so critical that we make sure mm. that God is in our focus and that not the faults of our of our mate, but that God's future plan for them, you know, yes. we're, it's got, we need to call their destiny out. We Praise need to call their, their, the prophetic words that God has spoken over them. So we don't uh, pick at them, but no. we call them forth. That, that, we call them right. forth to their future. Oh, that, again, yeah. that's, that's wonderful, wonderful wisdom. And I would like you to lead us in prayer. This has just been so powerful. And, and Miles, if, if we can begin sure. with you, that you'd lead us out in prayer. But before I do, I wanted to say that there's somebody watching today Thank you, God. who is on the verge of divorce mm -hmm. and you have mm. given up, you've, mm. you've decided that there is Thank no you, hope. I want to tell you right. that we've seen so many miracles of restoration yes. I want to encourage you to find help. I want to encourage you to get some counseling, to see a pastor again, to right. revisit it, because right. you do not want to get divorced until you are sure you've right. done everything you possibly can before the Lord. And so today, I think, believe God wants to turn some of you around right. and bring you back towards one another because you're not each other's enemy. So right. Father, right. I thank you, thank you Lord. for thank everyone you, Lord. watching today. Yes. I thank yes. you for marriages. marriages. I thank you that yes. your desire is to, for us to see you in our marriage, mm -hmm. to see beyond Beyond each other's faults mm -hmm. and to, to recognize that that you are the one that yes. is the source for us to learn how to love to be able to love in a cleaner and clearer and more pure way God we are dependent on you today I pray for each marriage that they would recognize our dependence yes. And I also believe that there's somebody out there believing for their children. Um, mm, you're believing yes. your, for your children's marriage, and God has a Thank marriage. You. God, Thank you. sorry, God has an answer for you yeah. that He is with you, and He is going to fulfill His promise over That's your right. children. He's going right. to bring the right That's mate, right. and That's God's right. going to. It's going to be a beautiful oh, wedding, and it's going to be a beautiful union. Thank and God you. is the promise keeper, <laughs> and it's our job. He said it, and it's our job to believe believe it. And he said that he would bring those, those, those ones faithfully into our, our, our mate, our, our, you know, yeah, our children's lives. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This has just been a wonderful hour and God has just anointed and blessed. And I, I really believe that, that God's powerful word is reaching our people. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.